All right, here's attempt number three to start the stream. I upgraded a game show today, and looks like game shows. The new version sucks, or or else maybe there's some weird internet issue. I haven't streamed in a week because I've been on vacation, doing Thanksgiving stuff with my family. I'm crossing my fingers too, and my toes. But anyways, if you're watching this YouTube video, I'm working on checksumming all the assets of the game just to make sure the game downloaded correctly because that's happened a few times in the past where Steam didn't quite download it like a certain file correctly or something, somebody's, you know, weird internet connection or some glitch in the stream, just like we're experiencing today. So check something. That's what I'm working on today. Let's hope, wait, is this going okay so far? So far... Well, I'm interested. This is going to be a cool science experiment here. If this stream fails too, then it's not the new game show version. It's something with my internet connection, which would suck. I hope it, I hope the problem is game show. Yeah. Oh man, right. Totally salad dongs. Wait. Is there can you do like Sigwin? And then some kind of package manager within Sigwin. How am I going to get this to LS-1 inside? Uh, man, man, man. Okay, assets. Okay, good. It was building assets.cpp correctly. That's a good start. And let's let's finish it off correctly. <laughs> oh, there is apt. App sig? Oh, it doesn't have a lot of packages. Oh, and those are pre built as well. Yeah, I know. I wish there was brew. Wait a minute, what about um, Pac-Man, Salad Dongs? Is there a Sigwin Pac-Man? Because isn't, isn't Pac-Man way better? Oh, I mean, I mean not way better, but Pac-Man allows you to rebuild everything. What's up, Beach Knee? Yeah, the stream, yeah, this is the third time I started to stream here. It's been crashing. I'm not sure whether it's my internet connection or whether it's the new version of Game Show. Hopefully, it's just the new version of Game Show. There is. There's PacSig. Maybe this would work. Yeah, you got it too. PacSig. Oh, um, Salad Dongs, how did you like console? The KDE console. So if I go Alice, Alice, LS Assets Textures, and then I go LS-1 Assets Textures, but I want to prefix each one of those lines with Assets Textures. Include directory entries? No. Chuck of milk returns. Ah. <laughs> Ah oh, man, it might be easier just to write this in PHP actually. 
Oh, you can recursively list sub subdirectories. I didn't know that. You ended up not using console. There wasn't an OSX terminal email that supported the features. Oh. Oh. Okay. So I term two was like had what you needed. <laughs> A stack buffer overflow. Who has it, man? Everyone's run into that before. Huh, I think the only thing relevant here is uh, dash R. Damn, that didn't do what I wanted either. Ah, oh, well, I guess I'm going to do this in PHP because... Yeah, yeah, what you working on? Nice. Lunge, Fatal Sword. Is this like a, kind of like a Final Fantasy style, but like with 3D graphics? Lime, it's looking cool, man. Tell me more about it. Saladong, you're not even using Vim? What are you using now, Saladongs? Oh, this is such a twist. To, to the dark ages of the web. Well, it's kind of easy to code stuff in PHP. So, you know, instead of trying to work up a, a magical bash script to do this, it's easier to kind of massage it. Massage it, man. With the... With PHP. dot dot slash raw slash assets dot php and then assets dot php will do what we want it to do cd raw copy shaders assets it's a prototype you're making for class sweet You're using Emacs? Nice. So you're starting to use Emacs. Uh-huh. So okay, what was the what was the thing that made you switch from using Emacs or from using Vim to Emacs? Space Max, huh? Okay, change to the current directory, output to source assets.cpp. Um, we're going to glob everything in dot dot slash assets star as, no wait, oh, I think we can do um, star star. PHP's glob command is awesome. Forgot how awesome it is. Hell, this is gonna be easier than freaking a, a bash script. <laughs> Wait, I say that now. I say that right now. But we'll see. So if you're following along the stream here on the YouTube video, what I'm doing right now is I'm creating um, a file list, which I'll use to loop over all the files and then check some of them all. You saw a talk done by a Vim user who switched to Emacs. Okay, let me check this out. 
I wish I wish I'd watch this. Yeah. Got it. Thanks, Salad Dongs. I'm really going to check that out because it might have some really good points. And after using Vim for a year, I'm still not convinced that it's that awesome. The thing is, I'm still, after using it a, like a year, I'm still not intuitively doing its commands. You know, I'm still not grasping everything. I mean, I guess I've, I've, I've really improved a bit because I finally understand what's what, what's what mode. What really, really helped was changing um, the cursor in insert mode. So in insert mode, it looks a lot different, the cursor. And out of insert mode, it turns back into a block. That really helped me. It's a lot more intuitive now. But still, it's not as intuitive as a regular text editor is to me. Okay, but let's use it. Let's use it today, shall we? While we're doing this, game shaders, game assets. This is C. Nope, <laughs> I did something wrong. See that? <laughs> what have I done? I know there's a better way to do that. Okay, let's see if this this works here. CPP dot equals tab. File name. PHP, good old PHP. The stream again? Zilted, it's not just you. It's not just you, man. Oh, but it's okay on this end right now. Try refreshing. Space Max has a really thorough documentation. And you can look up key bindings. Oh, that's nice. Hello, Fortune is live. What's up, man? I'm working on check summing. You got your V. You got your Vive working. You're making a VR game. Sweet, man. Okay, let's see if that worked. So we'll call raw. Wait, 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 we gotta chmod. Chmod it, man. Chmod that. Chmod the file. Alright, and let's see what it outputted. Oh my god, it almost worked! Almost. I love PHP, man. It's so great. PHP is awesome. So if I just if I just cd into the directory before and then and then put some quotes around these Sweet fortune, that's awesome. What kind of procedure generated game? So we'll go glob assets and this will be Dir name argv dot dot and then surround it with quotes and a comma. Gotta can't forget the comma. Or I shouldn't have quit. Don't quit. 
No such file or directory. Oh, I forgot the slash. Okay, so I wrote it, and now let me execute it. Didn't work. What the fuck? What? Nice, man. Live Studios. High five. Yeah, man. Oh, cool. It's a PC game, huh? Vanilla Emacs. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. Oh, my gosh. The turkey break was great. I was saying earlier, uh, I climbed my favorite mountain and then got to see my family. Such a great vacation week. Yeah, lots of people badmouth PHP, for sure. But I coded in it for a good year or two, so I, I got a pretty good handle on it. What's really nice about it are some of these really nice functions like this, like glob. It's got some excellent functions. Oh, of course assets wouldn't output anything. I need to load it. The outputted file. That didn't work. <laughs> didn't? Really? It didn't work? It worked, but it did, why didn't it do the quotes? Good, we got a nice file list starting to be built up here though. Once again, it didn't do the dot dots either. Maybe this guy didn't even, didn't even do anything. Remove source assets. Okay, yeah, it didn't work, it worked. Didn't work at all. So what the hell? Yeah, the PHP script's gonna be run by my bash build script. What's up, Freebly? So, dirname argv0 should be. Why do I got to make this harder on myself by doing this in Vim? Hmm? Why? Ah. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes I hate this. Ay, ay, ay. Watch your stream play. <laughs> do it. You can do it. What's the what's the command to print something in PHP? I think it's just print. Yeah, it's print. But is it, it's not a real function, so you need, I think you don't wrap it or something? Oh, you do wrap it with, um, yeah, okay. So it's just print, dir.
get current working directory, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna switch directories. Dude, I'm not gonna use Vim anymore. Dir is their name, argv dot slash dot dot, and then print, after we change directories, we print the current working di directory. I just wanna see why nothing is happening here, man. Why is nothing happening? Oh, because, oh! A file put contents and dot dot slash source. That was probably it. Is there a dot dot slash source now? Yep. So it was working. Damn it all. All right. This is fine. Everything is fine here. Fine, fine. Game assets, load this file, print it out, da da da. Okay, run it again. Now, show me that file. Yes, good. Okay, we have a proper list. Can you carry the team? Can you do it? Can you do it? We need one. A trailing curly brace. And parentheses and a semicolon. There. Now we've got a list of all the assets in the game, ready to go, ready to import into the game. Okay, let's make sure the game is all set up so it um, it includes this CPB file into the EXE. Oh, let's make sure that building the release mode will rebuild that file. So let's remove source assets and then make release. and see if it rebuilt that file. Good. Okay, good. Every time I rebuild the release mode, it's gonna update this list. And we also are gonna need to check some inside this file. So, but anyways, let's switch back to debug mode. And um, the checksum needs to be in game.h. We need a private variable, static uint 64t assets checksum. And then when we build assets.cpp, oops, we also need to export. Um, we need to add in UN64 type game assets checksum equals let's call it OX0 for now.
and then I'll re I'll change that while after after it's done. Yeah, so we got game assets checksum equals zero. I did OX zero, so it's easier to search and replace that. And then we have a vector of strings of every single asset. I gotta get a drink of water real quick. Game show is still doing all right. That's crazy. Looks like game show 3.4 is not working. What's up, Boogie? I'm working on doing a check sum of the game just to make sure that uh, it downloads okay for people. Because I've had this problem twice now where somebody downloaded the game and just wouldn't run or something. Some weird stuff happen. Okay, so now that I have an output of every single file and a checksum variable, I can add this to the source code. So we need to add in the assets.cpp into the Mac version. No, actually every one of the versions. Where should I put this? Here looks like a good place. Good enough. So I'm adding assets.cpp to the Mac version. The iOS version. Um, let's go to the Linux version. It's buffering for you too? We're having way crazy, oh dude. I saw it do a little yellow thing. Oh man, maybe it is um maybe it isn't game show. It could be just Twitch is crazy today, or my internet connection is crazy again. Which would be horrible if it's my internet connection. Cause I'm already like using the lowest amount of upload bandwidth I can. Let's hope it's not my internet. It's, it just seems to go downhill and get worse every year. All right, here we go. Linux version, assets, and the uh, Windows version. We need to add it to VCXProj. Seems all right. Cool. Oh man, I hope it stays okay. So VCX Proj and the filters file. There we go, cool. We got it added to every single platform. Now I should just be able to compile. <laughs> Knock on wood.
Wait, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Statement expression not allowed file scope. Oh, not equals. Okay. Let's see what's up. Let's see what's going on here. This needs to be just like that. Redo it. Recompile. Yes, okay, good. Now all we gotta do is write a function that loops over every single one of the entries here in this game assets list and checksums every file and then you know creates a basically an overall checksum for the entire game, all its assets, and it'll be a single number. And I'll post I'll post this put this number right here in the into this assets checksum so that the game can compare its current checksum versus this number. So whenever it builds the game in release mode, it prepares the game for release, it goes and it does a checksum, it produces that number, and then every time it ever runs the game, um, it will do a little checksum on all the files. Well, not every time. I can add a little setting on whether it should do it every time or whatever to the um, the actual saves.txt file. But basically, the game will now have the ability to check all its assets to make sure that they're okay, they were downloaded okay, um, and or they were not tampered with in the case that somebody, you know, if somebody does tamper with their assets files, the only thing it does, that's great. You know, you're, I'm encouraging everyone to mod Songbringer if they want to. But it just won't, it won't allow you to upload your score to the leaderboard if you've tampered with your assets. Okay, so let's disable this. Now we got to loop over these files and start a checksum. So I'm thinking that'll be a game function. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing this checksum for. Two reasons. Making sure people are playing the game and it's not going to crash on them. And also making sure the leaderboard is full of as good a scores as possible. I know that some people are probably still going to cheat on the leaderboard, but at least this will prevent, you know, keep the honest people honest. Mm, this checksum function doesn't need to be a public function. Yeah, okay. Doesn't need to be a public function. We'll just put it right here in game.cpp. It's buffering for you all the time, too? Oh, it's red!
Well, all right. I'm just going to continue this video here on YouTube um, because the internet's not working or something's work not working. Twitch maybe might just be the internet. So I'm just going to continue this video on YouTube and since there's really no one to chat with, um, I will try and like, um, vis like verbally say what I'm doing from time to time, but I think most of the time I might be quiet here. Okay, so where I left off was um, I was about to write a function which goes and checks sums every file and then produces sort of like an overall file. So, or a, an overall checksum from all the other checksums of all the files. So, um, this will be recursive function. I'm going to declare it here. So it's a, this function will be called checksum, give it a file name, and also give it a checksum value to start with. So I'll start by calling this function with zero. I guess I'll make two functions here. One will be checksum all, and the other one will be checksum. Throw these at the very end for now. Am I pragma marking these? Save load data. Uh, okay, no, not really. All right. So checksum all is just going to loop over every file. Starting with a zero, and for every file in oh, this does need to be. Okay, well, check sum all, we can pass a vector of strings, which will be all the files. Const vector string ref file names. This is kind of the fun part, I guess. Now I got the scripty part of it done. I can do the codey part of it, which is always a little easier for me, C++ versus any other language, because I guess I'm most familiar with it. So, wait. What's using so much CPU? What is doing these? I guess it's just indexing. Okay, so for each file name, we give it a checksum, checksum that file, given the checksum, and when we're all done, we just log it out. Here's the checksum. And I guess we'll log it as a long, long hexadecimal value. Okay, that should work. Oh, except for the value. It's like, you can't just name that and have a function name that. All right, good. Now we're down to the function that's going to do the checksum. Let's hook this up so it's actually going to do it, though. After we set up the paths, and load settings, but before we do the setup GL view, we might be doing a checksum all. Let's just call this if true for now. 
if true, checksum all game assets. Actually, we just call this checksum as well. Yeah, we'll call this checksum because I want this checksum to also compare the checksum to the baked value. Okay, so everything should be hooked up now. Now we just gotta write this function. So we need to open the file, read it in, add it all up, Let it overflow. That's it. There is something I did in a hash function, which kind of adds bits a little bit better, but it really doesn't matter what algorithm I'm using. I could swap the algorithm so easily once this is all said and done. So it's really just a matter of reading the file, I do that in Valtree in a C++ y kind of way. We're gonna need if stream, which is just, I think it's just f stream. Good. Okay, so we, we can now get the file, um, the, the size of the file. So the file is not open, return. Open the file, determine the size of the file, And then read in all the bits, read in all the all the data. Oh, we don't even really need to determine the size. We can just read so we can have a maximum file size. Const int okay max. Check some file size. Let's do, how big should be the biggest be? I think about a megabyte. Which is, this is a kilobyte. Oh, so it's only this big. Yeah, all right. So the max file size is 
Ten twenty four squared. Yeah, that's a megabyte. All right. So I'm going to loop and read like about a K or maybe 4K at a time, up to 4K. So we're going to read into buffer How do you check if the file has ended? It is good. Oh, EOF. And we'll get a total size as well. Max check some file size, and each time we read, we add to total. We read buff size each time. And then we just loop over every character in the buffer and check some it. So I wonder if there's a faster way to do that. Oh, there certainly is. If we read, if, actually, if we call buffer a, a buffer of uint 64s, and then just, yeah, move the pointer that way, it would be a lot quicker. We can check some a lot faster. I don't think file that read cares. Does it? Let's see. Oh, it does. Okay, that does take a character. All right, anyways, we'll keep this as a char character buffer besides we want to know the buff size. But we're going to loop over um, a UN64 type, type pointer. Oh, isn't that supposed to, I think it's supposed to be a reinterpret cast. It's not allowed. What are you talking about? Not allowed. I think it's supposed to be a reinterpret. All right. Now our size is going to be So the buffer size, we'll call this data size. It's just buff size over size of uint 
64 type. Let's call this buff size 64. Alright, now we can go for i equals 0, i is less than buff size 64. Checksum plus equals P plus plus. Should be all. Why is this giving me a warning? Oh, indirection of P plus plus. Okay, smarter to just go indirection of P and then plus plus P. But, oh, we could be running into random memory issues here because we're reading, reading the entire buff size and we're not re caring how much, how many bytes got read. G count? That's how you determine how many five characters got read? What's the difference between read and read some? Hmm. I'm just going to use read. Okay, G count, it is. So all we wanna do is go to the end of the buffer So we read in another chunk. Zero the remaining buffer. So I equals size. Okay, I guess we just go file that G count. So if we read in like one character, then we'd be starting at index one. And we're gonna loop until we hit buff size worth characters. We just said I guess we could mem set. Damn it. Mem set's probably better than just doing this. Mem set buffer plus file by g count.
zero, and the length is going to be, so we do need size. Hmm. Size equals g count mem set buffer plus size, and then take buff size minus size. And then check some the buffer. Okay, let's look over this, make sure this is all good and good and good and good. <clears throat> Total zero, size zero, buff size 4096, buff size 64 is that divided by the size of a UN64. Create a buffer, add one more byte just in case, set them all to zero. While the file is not done and the total is less than the maximum check sum file size. Read in another chunk, so it goes file.read into buffer buff size, which is 4096, add to the total, so I'll get checked. And then here, we were zeroing, zeroing the remainder of the buffer. So we take the size of, this is the number of, you know what, let's call this bytes read. It'd be way more specific. Right, that's guaranteed. G count is in bytes. Characters, yeah. Mem said, okay, buffer plus bytes read. So we read one byte, it's going to be starting from one byte in, okay. And man, I guess if this is, goes crazy, we need to make sure that it doesn't return some um, some value. If if um, bytes read is less than buff size, then we need to zero. Otherwise, if we do read in all the bytes that we needed, we wouldn't even need to do this at all. So this is a good check anyways. So bytes read is less than buff size. Buffer plus bytes read. So that does guarantee that this is going to be some somewhere in the buffer. Set them all to zero. Only mem set buff size minus bytes read. So for read, say 100 bytes, it's going to mem set about 3,900 bytes. Okay, I think that's right. And we can just set the P here too. Okay, P equals reinterpret cast UN64 type pointer buffer. It sets it to the beginning of the buffer and goes through the number of UN64s that it can get in this 4096, which should be even, right? Yeah, I know that's even. That's eight bytes. Wait, is it? 4096 divided by 8? Yeah. Okay, and so for each one of those, we're incrementing the index. And the pointer. So we're using pointer arithmetic to check some. Okay, so let's do some simple tests. What's the first file it's going to read? One Bostor. How about we do something even more simple? Like a test.txt file. Let's put the word testing. So that's kind of unique because 
there's a it's gonna do this two pointers no wait that's only one yeah okay there's only one P worth there now it's two pointers worth okay and we need to make sure this all works let's see what happens All right, first file we're going to do is assets text test.txt .text, sum starts at 0. Good. We get in here, we open the file, does it work? It does. That's a good start. Okay. What's buff size 64? 512. Good. All right, good. Our buffer has one extra byte. Everything looks good so far. So we know file read buffer buff size. So buffer should have some text in it. And it does. And it even zeroed the buffer because we have a successful string here. Um, but And then it adds the total. So it did total plus equals buff size. Actually, total should be plus equals bytes read. For accuracy. Okay, so we read testing dot dot dot. Bytes read should be about eight or nine, ten. That's where that's cool. Wait, is that right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yep, there's ten bytes exactly, and no new line character. Nothing at the very end. So yeah, it's exactly ten bytes. So total plus equals bytes read. If bytes read is less than buff size, it's gonna mem set the rest of the buffer to zero, even though they should all be zero already. Heck, let's let's try and mess this up. Let's pretend that we didn't set all the bytes to zero. Start with the random data. And let's make sure this memset function works. Important little bit to check. I can just set a breakpoint here instead of there. Save myself a little time. Okay, once again, we have 10 bytes read. We should have some random data here. Hopefully, it's not all zeros. Good. We got some zeros. We also got some other random characters in here. Just blah, 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 blah. Random data. Good. And it did it. Actually, it did not. So, file.read does not set a zero to the end. That's up to me. So let's make sure this memset works. Actually, the very end here, 4097, the last byte is an H currently. I'm thinking because we're doing buff size minus bytes read, that this last byte will not be affected by this memset function. I'd like that to happen because I don't want it to be going past this. That would be a huge memory error. Bytes read is less than buff size, should be. Yep. Okay, mem set. Let's see what happens. All these should be zeros, but the H should still be there. Good. We got the H still there, the zeros here. Everything else should be all these zeros. And testing. That 
dot, 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 with zeros starting it. Good, 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 good. So this memset function is proper, should be, right? Because buff size is 4096 minus bytes red, so that should be 4086. Yeah, all good. Okay, good check, very good check. I can undo that a little bit, it's not really necessary anymore. Um, all right, so we're setting P to the value of buffer. Both of these should be the exact same pointer memory address. Got 7FF. No, it's not showing me what buffer is anyways. Okay, so it's going to loop over for buff size, 512. It's going to keep adding to the checksum. And it should be adding 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to the checksum. So it's not, it should be affecting it with all the rest of the data, which is desirable or not. I guess it doesn't matter as long as I'm doing it consistently. Okay, so this first one, we should add checksum plus equals the first eight byte values, adding those all together. I'm not sure what that's gonna be, so let's see what it is. Checksum is already a huge value. And it's just gonna keep adding it and adding it and adding it. So there's probably a better way to add these together. The algorithm could be better here, but... Um, Let's just let it run like this. Basically, this is a this is an acceptable way to check some things. You're basically just allowing the 64 unsigned, uh, you know, the 64-bit value to just overflow, 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 overflow every time. So you know, once you're all done checksumming, your last overflow value is technically your checksum value. It's probably not the smartest way to do this, but it still should theoretically be sound. Anyways, now we should have one more character, so should still do one more iteration of this loop. Um, uh, it's actually going to do all the iterations of this loop, but it's going to add only one more thing to the checksum value. So our checksum value is going to change, but it's going to change only slightly. Yeah, I'm not sure what it changed here, but it probably changed something, hopefully. But yeah, now it'll just run, 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 and just it's not adding anything. Yeah, it's still 5554. Okay, there. I'm actually uh, happy with this. Um, let's see what happens with the assets checksum. I'm going to remove this test file. And run for the whole games, all the assets. Oh. One thing I really want to check is make sure that this does, I want to see how long this takes. So, um, auto now or start time equals kit time. Took percent DMS. There, now we got a little bit of a, just, it's gonna check some every single file, which, you know, could take a long time, theoretically. So I wanted to see how long it takes on my, my laptop here, while streaming. And it is taking, yeah, it did take a second there. Let's see how long that was. took one second. Okay, so that should be pretty reasonable to be able to check some all the game's assets in about one second. Maybe on older laptops or older computers, sorry, it's going to be like, you know, two to four or five seconds maybe. So that's reasonable to do that. At least the first time the player runs the game, right? So the player runs the game the first time, it checks sums the, the, all the assets to make sure they're downloaded correctly. And if it doesn't download correctly, it says, please, you know, delete the game, reinstall it. Um, and then it'll need to do this every single time somebody wants to uh, put a, a score up to the leaderboard or get an achievement. No, I think mean, getting achievements really doesn't really that. 
matter that much. Yeah, leaderboard's really the thing that needs to be checksum. So it does need to do a checksum if they're going to be up putting a score on the leaderboard. So maybe I can get that faster. If I can get that to be faster, that'd be pretty good. But one second to loop over 100 megs worth of assets is pretty good. So that's going to be it for today's stream. The last thing I'm going to do after today's stream is to go and just make sure this checksum value is correct every time. And that's it. So thanks a lot for watching, and um, hopefully the internet works better next time.